The first course had barely been served to all the court, the music hardly hushed, when there hove into the hall a hideous figure, square-built and bulky, full-fleshed from neck to thigh, the heaviest horseman in the world, the tallest as well. His loins and limbs so large and so long, I think he may have been half-giant. Anyway, I can say he was the mightiest of men, and astride his horse a handsome knight as well. But if he was broad of back and chest, his build mid-body was elegantly slender, his face befitting his form, his bold lineaments cut clean. But the hue of his every feature stunned them as could be seen. Not only was this creature colossal, he was bright green. Green all over the man and his garments as well. A surcoat snugged him tight at the waist, and over that a tunic close, closely trimmed inside with fine fur. The cloth resplendent and furnished with borders of bright ermine. The hood turned back, looped from his coat collar, and was also lipped with fur. Neat stockings, tightly drawn up, clung to his calves, all green and green, also the spurs that hung below. And they glinted gold against the striped silk hose of his stockinged feet, fixed in his stirrups and all his garments this unearthly green, down to the bars of his belt and the shining stones that richly studded the magnificent array. Around the saddle and all around himself a silken ground, the detail of whose embroidery would be difficult to describe with his delicate birds and butterflies. In bright green and a hem of hammered gold, the cords of the breast harness, the beautiful crupper cloth, the burnished bridal stud of baked enamel, even the steel of the stirrups on which he stood, the saddle bows and the broad saddle skirts, all glinted with greenish glow of jewels, and the steed he rode of the same bright green strain. A horse of massive limbs, most difficult to restrain, a useful mount with gems, studding his bridle and rein, and whose fresh looking this fellow decked out in green, a hair of his head matched with his horse's coat, bright hair curling and cascading down his back and bunched on his chest a bushy beard which, with the locks that hung from his head, was well trimmed just above the elbow joints, so half his arms were hidden beneath hair which cleaved to his neck like a king's cape. The horse's mane was like that of a mantle of hair, groomed and combed and neatly knotted, plated and filigreed in gold and green, one hank of hair to each strand of gold. The tail and the forelock were alike in detail. The bright green bands around them both were strung all along with studded stones and knit together with a knotted thong, along which a row of bells rang brilliantly. No one watching had ever before beheld a horse like that, and such a horseman had never crossed their tracks. To them he looked as bright as summer lightning that cracks the sky, and no man might withstand his dreadful axe. And yet, he wore no hauberk or no helm, no mail or metal plate, no arms or armor at all, no spear to thrust, no shield against the shock of battle, but in one hand a solitary branch of holly that shows greenest when all groves are leafless. In the other hand he grasped his axe, a huge thing, a dreadful weapon, difficult to describe, the head of the big blade over a yard in length, the spike of green steel and wrought gold. The blade brightly polished with a broad edge, beautifully cast, to bite keen as a razor. The shaft he grimly gripped it by, a straight staff wound with iron bands right to the end, engraved all about with elegant green design, circled with lacework lashed to the end, and looped round and round the long handle with plenty of priceless tassels, attached with bright green buttons richly braided. And now he shoves past them all, heaves into the hall, and rides up to the high table afraid of nothing he greeted no one just glared over their heads the first words he spoke were these where is he said the leader of this lot i'd be pleased indeed if he came forward and traded a few words with me and there you have it the costume got done and it is way nicer <laughs> then I think I even I expected it to turn out based on my existing skill set that I had before I started the project. Uh, I learned embroidery, I drafted patterns for the first time, I did so much work on this over the course of about a month and a half and I am so proud of how this turned out and I am wearing it a lot. The underdress has become my 
go-to like comfy dress that I wear in the evenings because it feels like I'm wearing a blanket which I am because that's what I made it out of uh, I the overdress is really great it basically has been working like an apron like a really fancy apron um, since I finished it uh, it goes through the wash and then I just hang it to dry and it works out so well uh, the problem with the underdress that I have is the only issue that I've had is the sleeves are very voluminous um, so they get dragged through a lot of things which is deeply unfortunate there's some smuts on it now but that's something to be dealt with later um, I am very proud of this there are of course things I would do differently next time um, I think I would change the way that I did the slit in the bottom dress in the overdress um, I would probably put lacing in it next time with some boning in it to give it some additional support just because I don't I'm not particularly fond of the way that it gapes at the bottom um, but it's a manageable thing um, I I like the length of the dress but having something a little bit shorter for the warmer months would be really good I'm already planning on making a different version of the underdress that has short sleeves for the summer um, and I'll probably shorten the hem length on that one as well um, when I submitted this to the contest I was so nervous I almost didn't do it um, I had one of those quick moments of I don't think this is good enough am I proud of it Oh, a hundred percent. Do I think it's good enough to submit for an international competition? I had my doubts, um, but I did it anyway uh, with a lot of support from my guy. Uh, he was the one sitting there going, press the button, press the button. And sometimes having somebody there that's there to egg you on and, and push you forward is a fantastic thing to have. So thank you, my darling. Um, and I, in the end, I, I'm quite proud of it. Um, the competition is, of course, now live. You can find the link for that down in the doobly-doo down below. Uh, if you'd like to check out all the entries, uh, all I ask is that you only leave nice comments on anybody that you really likes costumes. You can find me in the intermediate category on about the fourth page, I think? Pretty sure it's the fourth page. Um, if you would like to go in there and check out my entry and say nice things about me. Uh, if you want to say nice things about everybody else, that is also greatly appreciated. I'm not the only one, I'm sure, that put themselves out there and really tested their own abilities on this contest. And a lot of the other entries are just stunning. Absolutely stunning. And I am so proud to be among them in this competition. Um, and I hope that you all go on and you appreciate their entries as much as I do. Going forward, I might enter next year, it depends on what the theme is. Uh, for now, um, the next few videos that you're going to see on my channel will be older projects that I've already completed while I try to decide what my next project is going to be. Um, it's either going to be a pair of pants or a vest and I can't decide which one yet so it will be one of those um, but first you're probably going to see me in a quilting video and as well as a chemise slash nightgown project I did that's based on a pattern from the 1860s um, if you want to see any of those stay tuned feel free to hit the like button down below or the subscribe button if you feel like sticking around and getting notified every time I post a new video uh, I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I did. I certainly learned a lot while doing the videoing for this series and I've truly been enjoying it a lot. So I plan on keeping this up whether or not anybody actually watches them. <laughs> um, I deeply hope you all enjoyed this uh, and I will see you next time. Bye bye!